Morning guys, episode two. We're back down at the yard. I'm sat in my uh, wood shop at the minute. We're gonna go back outside to the forge in a short while. Uh, I just wanna go over a few things from the first video. I missed out a few things. I did a few things wrong. Everyone will be pleased to see I'm now shooting in landscape, not portrait, because I had to shoot on my phone the first time because I'm apparently the least organized person in the world. So the phone's on the bench, the camera's out today. We've got a spare battery, so we're not going to run out of battery, and hopefully it'll just make for a better quality sort of video. The other thing I need to address is... Up here. <coughs> Apparently, a few eagle-eyed people who watched the video noticed I missed off a few of my pings for safety glasses and for the safety gloves. I went through those, but I didn't add them onto the cost up there. So what I'll be doing is I'll, I'll be doing that this morning. So. I've actually got a few different types, a few different types of glasses here to look at. These are the ones I was wearing on the last episode. You see those? They're a yellow tinted safety goggle and those are the ones I was using on the last episode. Now you can get these on Amazon and I'll put a link in the uh, in the description down below. They're looking about £7 upwards. I won't put it on the ping just yet because there's a few different options. Personally on a budget I would go for these ones. These are just a clear lens safety goggle. Uh, and they retail about £2 on Amazon. Might add a bit of deli delivery on there, but if you're going to be ordering a few things, get yourselves a few pairs of these. You don't want to misplace them or crack them or whatever. The ones I will be using today... Fly in my face. Go away! You're ruining everything. They are my goggles from my workshop, because I do a lot of woodworking as well. That's these. And they're um, the Bolle, and they are tinted ones. They're going to be quite useful today because it's very bright out there. Yeah, these tinted ones, if you're interested in getting a pair, I think they're about £11 off Amazon. Again, another link will go in the description. So those are your options, really. I mean, there's all sorts of different coloured ones you can get. Personally, starting on a budget, just go for the clear ones, just so you've got some eye protection. If you prefer, you can add a bit more. So we're going to ping £2 up there on the cost. Ping! Love that sound. And that's going to be your goggles. Now just on the subject, while we're still on the subject of uh, safety glasses, one very eagle-eyed viewer of the video pointed out that I was being a bit naughty, not wearing my goggles the entire time I was hammering on that piece of mild steel that we used. Uh, the reason being, I should have been wearing them, the reason being is these yellow tinted ones, they weren't letting me see the colour of the steel very well. Uh, and for that reason I probably won't be using these very much. These tinted ones are fine because it'll take the glare away. Uh, but the clear ones are going to be the best bet. So from now on, safety goggles, safety first. Um, the next thing, I'll throw those up there. The next thing to talk about is gloves. These are the gloves I was wearing in the last video. Uh, just a standard sort of cut proof glove. I showed you them before. Again, I'll put um, I'll put a link in for Amazon in the description. Two pounds up there. Uh, add that onto the cost. I'll also show you these other ones that I've got which are these heavy duty sort of leather welding gloves. I have had these lying around before, so I won't put them on the uh, pinger, but you can pick these up. Uh, we won't be using them just yet, so I won't put them up there. I'll put them up there when we need them. Uh, but you can get those or similar on Amazon. I'll put another link in the description. Two pound again, everything seems to be two pounds for some reason. I don't know why, two pound specials. That's the safety equipment. Hopefully the total's up to date. We have bought some more bits and pieces. What have I forgotten? Oh yeah, the other thing. For some reason I didn't put the fuel cost on there. I went and got some uh, charcoal. I didn't put the fuel on the ping. But we're gonna address that in a little while. We're not gonna put that on because, well I'll show you why in a little while. So let's go have a look at, at the other bits that we bought for today. And we'll go over what we're gonna be doing today. All right guys, so these are the bits we've picked up this morning. I've been down to my local scrapyard and I've picked up some of this. So I'll just show you that, that's 16 mil rebar. And this stuff, I'm not sure how much it goes for new. We haven't bought any clean mild steel like I showed you in the previous video. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take that off the ping. <coughs> Come off there, because you don't need to buy that. You know, if you were still watching this uh, and you haven't been out and bought some mild steel, don't bother for the time being. Just go out to your local scrapyard, they'll have plenty of this stuff, 16 mil rebar. That was about a six meter piece, and he gave me it for four pounds. So we'll put that on the ping. And that's what we're gonna to use today, that's what we're gonna try and make some tongs out of. Uh, the only thing to note about that, apparently, rebar isn't necessarily mild steel. It's a bit like raw iron in that it can have bits of all sorts in it, so it's not reliably 
mild steel so you know if you get one piece and you make some tongs out of it and it works really great and you get another piece and it doesn't work as well that may be why but we're gonna see today we'll see how we get on with it but like I say six meters four pounds we can afford that I think to get started on that gives us plenty of stock for playing around I mean they're cut into sort of meter lengths and we don't need anything like that for tongs so there's plenty to play with there the second thing is I'm gonna use this to point while I'm doing the camera coke blend fuel the other day I went out and I bought this stuff serious about barbecue lumpwood charcoal and I got that from my local petrol station uh, just because it was down the road and we we realized that the wood wasn't working so we used the lump wood the lump wood worked a lot better but it still burnt through really quick from you know what we started off with you know a full forge worth of lump wood burnt down pretty quickly by the time we were finished playing with those pieces of stock so we need something that's gonna last a bit longer because that was five pounds for five kilograms you can see there this uh, coke blend that I've got the two bags 25 kilo bags so 50 kilograms of fuel cost me 14 pounds so we will put that on the ping ding 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 so yeah we've got plenty of fuel hopefully this will burn a bit longer it's a coal and coke blend I got this from my local solid fuel supplier they supply solid fuels obviously uh, but for sort of domestic use so people who still have coal fires or have a coal burner in their living room or whatever um, and it's it's relatively cheap the guy recommended that this probably was going to be the best bet so we're going to give it a go anyway uh, and if it works well we'll see if it works or not ditch the lump wood charcoal i won't bother with that for the time being and go for this uh, smokeless fuel it's called as well so it's hopefully i mean we are working outside at the minute but hopefully it's not going to give off too many awful chemical things or whatever what i am going to show you as well is uh, at the end of the last episode we hooked up our super high tech hair dryer under a brick into the forge just so I could leave it blasting some air in and I was chatting away to you telling you about this that and the other not concentrating and basically what happened was it got that hot it ended up melting the steel I don't know if you can see that but it's all pitted and there was lumps of uh, charcoal stuck to it and everything like that so both pieces that were in there and this one as well that you can maybe see on that edge it's really pitted um, it got really hot really quick uh, and I wasn't concentrating and that's my own fault it actually melted the steel so it obviously is getting hot enough this little forge is going to get hot enough to do what we need to do um, but what we're going to do today uh, first things first we're going to cut a little channel in here uh, and we're going to make this basically as it is here let me just stand up and show you as it is there but we're going to make the pipe sit in a little bit further so it'll get to our fuel um, and I can sort of turn that on and leave it for a little while without sort of babysitting it for too long So we're gonna get the grinder out. I know we said we're gonna try not to use so many power tools But a grinder is very useful. I'm not gonna put it on the costing because we're not gonna use it an awful lot If you can borrow one off a friend in the start that'll probably be useful So yeah, we're gonna mark that off and then we're gonna cut that and then we're gonna get the fire lit and we're gonna get cracking A little channel in there which is the angle grinder you've just seen so we'll just lay this in here fits nicely problem is I don't know if you can see very well there but we're sort of pointing up into the air and really it needs to be pointing down like that the problem I'm having is I can't really get into this edge with the angle grinder I mean maybe I'll try I'll try doing that but um, I might have to take this bottom off the gas bottle uh, remember in the last video I said if I had time I could probably take it off well I should have taken the time and taken it off or if I'd have thought about it we'd have flipped it round and done it at this end because obviously 
we can get in there but not to worry we'll make it work um, and I'll bring you back when we've done it Right, as you can see I've cut that channel up a lot deeper now, it's uh, a lot more in line with the base of the forge or the bed of the forge, I don't know what the proper terminology is We'll put that in there and already it looks to be laying a lot flatter a lot nearer the, where the base of the fire is going to be and we'll probably get round that by propping up our super tech, high tech hair dryer uh, with a brick or something like that and that should give us the angle to aim the air towards the bottom of the furnace at the bottom of the forge and hopefully keep us working a bit quicker so I'd call that a win alright guys now we've done that uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using our 16mm rebar to attempt to make a set of tongs um, our blacksmithing tongs I think they're sort of a, a, a bread and butter kind of thing of a blacksmith shop I've seen them with racks and racks of different tongs for different things so we're just going to start making some basic flat bar tongs I'm going to try and make them out of this I've never made any tongs before I don't know what I'm doing, I've never made anything remotely like this before but I mean I'll show you what happens uh, whether it works or not so hopefully you can learn something as I'm learning something we'll get away from using our vice grips once we've got some tongs and then we'll start making a few more bits of tooling and hopefully we'll start to build up a bit of a, a bit of an inventory of tools that we need to make the more fun things as we go forward further down the line we want to make cool stuff, axes and knives and cool bits of things for furniture and stuff like that but we've got to go through these basic tool things first and, and hopefully that'll teach us what we need to know I think what we're going to have to do further down the line is we're going to have to modify our little makeshift anvil um, I'll just show you a bit closer up what I mean at the minute we're about two feet long on this piece of railroad track maybe one and a half feet uh, something like that it's a bit big obviously it's overhanging our stump either side it's not fastened down although it is very very sturdy probably what we need to do is for our tongs we need to put a hinge on there um, and to do that we need to put a rivet in and there are two ways of doing it you can either drill the hole for the rivet or you can punch and drift a hole for the rivet but to do that as far as I know you need a round hole in the end of your anvil called a pritchell hole and we don't have one of those we will have to drill one on there I'll clean off the bird poop at some point as well probably give it a polish up not the poop the anvil probably cut a section out here so that we can drift through and then at the other end we might even try and make ourselves sort of like a horn kind of arrangement so that we can do bent work a bit easier I don't know if we find a cheap anvil in the meantime we might get one but yeah we might have some mods coming up so that should be interesting but it won't be this episode this episode we're gonna do our tongs so let's go and we'll do a bit of a design so what we're gonna to need to do your standard tong construction you've got your reins basically your handles and they could be well, not as long or as short as you want but to, to suit you if, you if you've got quite long arms you prefer a longer handle obviously the shorter they're going to be uh, the more heat transfer you're going to get so you need to be careful with that uh, you've then got the boss what's called the boss area which is basically where your hinge goes so there you have a rivet in the middle and then you have your jaws or you, I think they call it a bit. So you've got your reins like on a horse, you've got your jaw, a uh, bit like on a horse. And you've got your boss, if your boss rides a horse. I don't know. Uh, you've got that bit there. And you make two identical pieces. Um, so you end up, you end up with another set of reins coming down here. Uh, this could possibly be the worst drawing you've ever seen, so just be aware. Uh, and then you end up with your other bit coming up the top there. And obviously behind there there's your other boss for the other piece and you put a rivet straight through like we said earlier you can either drill the hole for that which we're gonna do um, or you can punch and drift it but we don't we haven't made any punches because you need to make those out of tool steel I think again tell me if I'm wrong and you drift as well same thing and we don't have a pritchell hole in our little makeshift anvil yet which you need to uh, punch out the slug and, and, and drift through with your with your drift uh, so we're just gonna go um, and, and sort of cheat a little bit we will do a set with a punch and a drift um, but we haven't got the tools to do it so we're gonna drill it uh, and then we're gonna put put a little rivet through that we're gonna put a little rivet through there um, sort of 10 mil rivet something like that I'm not sure 
and hopefully by the end of today we'll have a, a working set of tongs. So uh, let's get the fire lit, let's get going. Alright guys, so the forge is heating up, we're at the anvil now, uh, we've got our piece of rebar and what we're going to do is, we're going to mark off a two inch, mark off two inches in and four inches in, as you can see there, it's two little chalk marks um, and what we're going to do there, uh, that's where we're going to start to flatten out the the jaws of the tongue and the boss of the tongue. This back bit's going to become the reins, they can stay a bit longer, we can trim those off at the end, but the business end is up here, so we're going to get that in the in the forge and start getting it heated up. Uh, so while that's heating up in the fire, I'm just going to go back over to the anvil, and we've now got an addition down there, can you see that? I think you can probably see that. Uh, we've got a little water tank, because they're having to isolate parts of the tongs, we want to avoid heating up the whole piece because you can start to deform the bits that you've you've spent some time shaping. Um, so what we're going to have to do, by popular demand, we're going to have to quench. 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 That's for you, Sam. I know you like the word quench. Because we're only using mild steel, or you know, we're not using any kind of high, high carbon steel, we're just going to be quenching in water. I believe if you if you're using tool steels or, or high carbon steels, you need to quench in something like oil, because it it doesn't cool the metal too rapidly and form a crystalline stru structure and eventually crack. From what I know, I don't really know much about tool steels. We'll move on to those in a, in another video way down the line. I think we're going to be working with mild steels from now on, but for the time being. So we're just down there in the forge. We'll get up to heat and we'll uh, wail on it a little bit. As you can see, we've got a little bit of a dull glow going on there already. So we get that back in. Okay, so we're approaching a working temperature there. Let's move over to the anvil and get working. Back in the fire. Flatten that off. Heat it back up again. Now a few of you may have noticed why I'm only wearing one glove. Do -do -do -do. Not because I'm a massive Michael Jackson fan. I am, it was awesome, but because key glove on the piece that's holding your work and when you're swinging your hammer you want a bare hand, you don't want any risk of your hammer flying out of your hand while you're swinging it around you do damage to yourself, damage your work piece, hit a chicken if you're down here at the yard like me they don't like it, they'll get really angry when you're hammering, take your glove off but keep your glove on your piece that's holding your work So there you can see uh, we've flattened out the end there. Uh, we're going to give it another go. We're going to make it a little bit thinner uh, and try and dry it out a little bit. So drying it out is where you stretch the piece so it's longer. Basically I've just stressed the edges because I don't want this pattern on the side. I'm not too bothered about that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to turn it 90 degrees. We're going to flatten out this section here into the boss and then we're going to try and get some sort of shape in it as well. So the lump wood stuff that we used up from last time has burned down. So I put, a, as you can see, I put a, a lot of the new smokeless stuff on, and we'll see how see how it goes, see how long it lasts. Uh, it looks like coal. <laughs> we don't really know what else to say. We'll just see how it works. Right, so we forge that out. It's about three quarters of an inch wide uh, by two inches long. So now we're going to try and isolate the next one. And we're going to, we're going to flatten out this bit. Like I said, turn it through 90 degrees and flatten out another two inch section here. So 
Back into the fire. So this new fuel we're using seems to be heating everything up a lot quicker. And what we've actually got here on the other end of this hammer that I found by look, it's sort of like a ball peen end. So you see what we've got there now, we've got this boss shape, we've got the reins coming in, and this boss coming out, so we need to exaggerate that shape now. Well that was terrible. Vice grips came undone and I dropped the piece. You can see what I've done there. That's given. I think I've gone a bit too far actually with that. But again, we'll straighten that up when we come to mate the pair up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw these reins back out this way. So we're back in the fire again. Alright guys, so we've got the uh, we've got the bit drawn out there. It's about three quarters of an inch by two inches. We've got the boss sort of uh, sort of rounded out a little bit there, um, and then we've started to draw back in a square. I mean, it's a bit like a banana at the minute, but we can straighten that up later. So what I'm probably going to do now, because what I'm struggling to do is I'm struggling to heat up the middle section. The ends are easy enough, you put the end in the fire, but the middle section, you've got to try and nestle it round, and because we've got only got a short little forge, it spaces at a bit of a premium. Uh, but we've got a lot of material here, so probably what I'm going to do is, I'm going to chop, I'm probably going to chop the reins up just a little bit after where my vice grips are there, because this can be a lot thinner, we're going to just start drawing this out, so we'll heat it from this end, and we'll start drawing the reins out from the back, and then... Hopefully we'll move on to piece number two. All right, so the piece is in the forge. I've just chopped it off. Uh, the length I think is a, it's about right. So we're gonna give everything a straighten up on the bit and boss end. And then we're gonna start drawing the reins out in a minute. Right, we're going to start working on this end now, Sam. This is for you. Yeah, quench. Needs straightening up a bit, but we've drawn out the uh, handle, and hopefully, when it's drawn out, it should be the right length. It's going to be a few inches longer than that. <clears throat> uh, 
so we're going to start drawing that out into a taper, drawing the handle out into a taper. Um, and then I think that might be it for this side. We'll punch a, a guide hole for, or we'll just punch a mark in it for the centre of the boss where we're going to put our rivet. And then we'll uh, start making the second piece. What I'll probably do is I'll, I'll just film that. I won't do much talking through the second piece because it's just a, a carbon copy of the second one, uh, of the first one. And I'll try to get that made nice and quick, and then we can get to assembly. See, I'm drawing out as I'm drawing out the taper at the end of the reins. That part's nice and straight now. The rest of it's a bit whoa, all over the place, but as we work our way back up the piece, just neatening it off. Alright guys, so we've gone from a piece of 16mm rebar on the right hand side to the start of our tongs on the left. I don't think we've done too bad, time to make the second set. Alright guys, so we're about halfway through, uh, we forged one side of the tongs. Uh, I'm going to see how they look when we... When we don't know what happened there. When we've done the second side of the tongs, I don't know what the full arrangement's called, if anyone knows the full arrangement one side of a pair of tongs is called a tong. It makes sense. Uh, so I'm gonna get the second side made now. Probably gonna speed it up as well because it's taken me the best part of three hours to make the first bit. I haven't been mumbling through it, I don't know what I'm doing, so hopefully the second part will go a bit quicker, I'll heat it up a bit faster and I won't be faffing around turning the camera on and off. I'll bring you back in when we're up and ready to pair them up. So I'm going to keep doing, uh, as I'm making the second side, I'm just going to keep checking it against the first piece, so we end up with two symmetrical pieces. Uh, not symmetrical, no. Uh, that's something uh, That's something I need to point out. They're definitely not symmetrical, they are identical. They're not a mirror image of each other, despite what you might think. They're both exactly the same, so you make them exactly the same, and then you turn them and they form a pair of jaws. You don't make a left, a left piece and a right piece. I'm glad I pointed that out because I nearly made it wrong. the end of our pipe uh, so I think the pipes melted into the bottom of there somewhere um, which is obvious really because it's a piece of steel stuck in the end of a forge it's been in there for hours so um, we saw what happened to those other pieces of steel so I'm guessing we're gonna have to think of a solution to that more long term uh, but I'll get back to you on that one
All right, guys, um, so I'm just about running out of time now. So unfortunately, I can't finish these tongs off. Uh, what we have got, uh, and they're just cooling off now, so I'll show you them in a minute. We have two halves. Uh, we need a bit of handle work on the second half. Uh, but I think they're looking the right shape. So we need to drill those tomorrow. Uh, we need to, or on the next episode, should I say, um, we need to rivet them. And we need to sort those handles out. Uh, we need to drill them, we need to rivet them and then we've got a lot of squaring up work to do to make sure that they hold straight and that we can hold the stock that we need to hold. Um, you've seen in the video so far, if I decide to include it, I've dropped my stock a lot today. Um, the vice grips aren't a long term solution, they're only good for short term. Obviously that's why we're making our own tongs. So. Um, our forge has start, decided to eat our super high tech solution. For our airflow uh, it's just been that hot today that the steel pipe at the end has just been uh, well I'll show you it's just been slowly worked away slowly melted away it's about two-thirds of the length that it was when we started I'll just show you if I can how hot it's been getting So we need a long term solution for that, so we need to come up with something. Um, the new fuel's worked great, really happy with how that's worked. Uh, it's burnt nice and hot, it's not burnt out as fast. As you can see we've still got plenty of coals there. Out of the two bags we've got, we've used maybe a quarter of a bag, maybe a fifth of, call it a fifth of the bag, so five kilo, and we got 50 kilos for 14 pounds so I think we've done all right that's certainly a lot better than the uh, charcoal that we've been using a lot cheaper per burn and that's been going for probably five or six hours now so the two halves of the tongs have cooled down now this is the first half that we did and it's got that nice square handle with a slight taper on it this is the second one we've done and it's still got quite a lot of chunk on the handle, obviously you can still see that rebar shape. We've not started to put the taper in yet. In terms of similarity, we're not too bad. There's that shoulder there. They need a bit of work, but for my first time I'm really happy with them. As you can see the thickness in handle is slightly different, and as we're drawing it out, we've got a lot of length left on this one. We'll have to trim that off, because we'll probably end up with another half an inch, maybe an inch on the model nose by the time they've gone together. So you see that we've made two identical ones and that's because when they go together they sit like that you see. Um, we've obviously got to get it so that that boss is nice and flat so it works as a hinge because you can see when we're trying to close it it's pushing itself apart so the rivet's going to go through there. We'll close the jaws up so that they fit nicely, bring the handles so that they you know we can hold them in one hand um, and I'll uh, we'll be looking at doing that next time so for the time being sorry I've run out of time guys I did want to try and get this done in one episode looks like it's gonna be a two-parter um, so yeah thanks for coming along thanks for watching give it a like give me a comment down below if you've got any tips for me certainly with regards to doing something with the forge we need some ideas there um, any tips on my tongs or anything you think I could benefit from or just comment and say hi obviously click subscribe because why wouldn't you and I'll see you on the next part bye